I'm Kim Minchella, author of books for middle grade readers, and today we're talking all about POV, or point of view. So you may have heard there are four different types of point of view. First, second, and two types of third. But first, why do we even need to care about point of view as authors? Well, it's actually one of my favorite things to talk about and think about because the point of view is so, so important to your story. Take one of my favorite books of all time, The One and Only Ivan. This story is told through the point of view of a silverback gorilla. So imagine you are the author, Catherine Applegate, and you had to put yourself inside the mind of a gorilla because everything she says is coming out of Ivan's mouth. And she's seeing everything through Ivan's eyes. So actually picking your point of view character is super important and then becoming that point of view character as the author is super important as well. So let's take a look at the chapter names in the one and only Ivan. People call me the freeway gorilla, the ape at exit eight, the one and only Ivan mighty silverback. The names are mine but they're not me. I'm Ivan. Just Ivan, only Ivan. Humans waste words. They toss them like banana peels and leave them to rot. Everyone knows the peels are the best part. So first of all, Ivan's a little snarky for a gorilla, which is awesome. But I love how right away we see that he is using things that a gorilla would know about to describe his situation, like banana peels. So that makes total sense. And you always have to do that. No matter who your character is, you have to think about what life experience do they have and based on that, what words might they choose? What references would they make? So of course, if you're a gorilla, you're gonna reference banana peels, for example. Um, so Ivan is an example of first person. We're getting it directly from Ivan's point of view. He's telling you, I did this, I did that, I felt this way. And that's the way that first person works. It has a lot of benefits. I actually have a video on first versus third person that you can refer to too for some more of those pros and cons of using first versus third. But there, we're gonna skip over second person for a minute and talk about the first type of third person, which is third person limited or close. And that's actually what I use for almost all of my books. And it has a lot of benefits. So I mentioned in first person, you're directly inside the character's head. Well, in third person limited or close, you are also directly inside the character's head. Everything you write, for the most part, is from the eyes of your main character. So it's really, really cool because you can do it almost like first person, but you're going to use he, she, they, or some other third person pronoun. So The Secret Life of Sam is a book that I have that uses third person limited. So we're going to look at an example of this. On This one is from page 47, and we're in the head of Sam, the main character. He didn't move an inch as she retreated down the hallway. His first thought was, who the heck eats pancakes at 5.42 in the morning? Followed quickly by, who the heck did this lady think she was telling him to wash his hands? Paul hardly ever washed his hands, except when he got back from fishing and sometimes not even then. Was she saying that he was dirty or that his paw was dirty? What made her so great and fancy? Just because she lived in an ugly old dollhouse with yellow plates in the middle of some creepy ghost town? So as you can see, we're in third person, but it's not like you're not getting all the feelings <laughs> and the brooding and the thoughts and you're hearing the voice of the character. So even though you're in third person, all of those things can come through. You're just using the pronouns she, he, they, whatever pronoun suits your character, and you're doing them in the third person. Person. Now, why might you want to do this as opposed to first if they're kind of the same? Again, I have a video all about this, but one thing is that when you're doing third person, you have a little bit more license to slip in your authorly voice. So you might want to say things, something that sounds a little bit fancier maybe than your character might actually say, or you might even want to pull the lens out at times and you're not always 100% of the time so close up on exactly what the character is thinking. You can pull back a little and have a wider view of the scene. Uh, so that gives you a lot more options when you're using third person, but both, 
third limited and first person are amazing. And of course, there's another third person. It's called third person omniscient. This isn't used as much nowadays, but this is when as the author, you're skipping from head to head to head to head. So you have multiple characters and even within the same scene, within the same chapter, you can see all of their thoughts and see in their head whenever you want to, <laughs> and you go back and forth. And it's not used as much as it was in the past. It can get a little confusing if it's not done well, but essentially you get to see all the character's thoughts whenever you want. And second person is you, like you. <laughs> You're talking directly to the reader. And when this is often used is if you have ever read a choose your own adventure story, these stories will, often be something like you go into a dark cave you hear a noise what will you do next and as the reader you get to decide but there are also some really amazing famous award-winning authors who are using second person in really creative ways like N.K. Jemisin who writes speculative fiction fantasy for adults um, those are some really creative uses of the second person but maybe you you should try to write your own book in second person too. So my challenge to you is to come up with a one paragraph story with a beginning, middle, and end and try to write it using all four, or at least let's say three, <laughs> using at least three of the POVs we talked about. Do a first, do a second, and do one of the two types of third that we talked about. So that's your challenge for today. Thank you for joining me as we talked all about POV. Bye everyone. I'm back because I forgot to share one of the most creative POVs ever, and that is from Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. The very beginning is from the POV of, are you ready for this? A knife, an object. <laughs> so here it goes. The knife had a handle of polished black bone and a blade finer and sharper than any razor. If it sliced you, you might not even know you had been cut, not immediately. The knife had done almost everything it was brought to that house to do, and both the blade and the handle were wet. So, and it continues, so I encourage you to continue reading. Um, but that is just so amazing because you almost never see that. I mean, it's pretty cool. We talked about Ivan doing the perspective of a gorilla. That sounds really difficult, but wow. Why don't you try doing a story from the perspective of an inanimate object, like a knife or something like that? How creative can you get? So I just wanted to share that one with you before we go, but bye everyone. Thank you.